I want to talk about the name of Jesus today. There's power in that name. Glory in that name. Answer to your situations in that name. He's a problem solver. He's a mountain mover. He's your all in all. Don't need anybody else. Just when you call on that name, everything changes. When you mention the name of Jesus, atmospheres change. Angels show up. Devils run. <laughs> Amen. Something about the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When you're at your lowest moment, just call on the name of Jesus. When you're on your highest mountain peak, shout out the name of Jesus. He's the answer for it all. Let me tell you. Everybody say, Jesus. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Do you have your Bible with you? Lift it up. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'll never, never, never doubt this word because it is the word of God. I've got ears to hear, heart to receive, so teach to me the word of God. So I've got ears to hear. Didn't I already say that once? Do it again. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. While y'all were reciting that, I was three points ahead in my sermon, and I lost my place <laughs> where I was at. Oh, praise the Lord. Ah, oh, praise God. Well, lift your hearts with me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this is a grand and glorious moment in our lives. We're pulling our chair up to the banquet spread of your word. Your word is the bread of life. As we have enjoyed wonderful turkey Thanksgiving meal now, we enjoy the word of God. And uh, we don't live by turkey alone. We live by every <laughs> word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And we are rejoicing over this, Lord. We're so happy, happy, happy that we are together. We are in your word. You are with us. In Jesus' name we pray. And we say amen and amen and amen. The name of Jesus, the glorious name of Jesus, the wondrous name of Jesus. Turn with me to Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. And now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered into the temple. Who? seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And Peter, fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. Hallelujah. I'd say this is a good moment right now to praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now following this, thousands and thousands of people gathered. They knew this man from his birth, had been laid at the gate of the temple, had never gotten past the gate, and now he's running and praising and leaping. He's in amongst them rejoicing in the name that has strengthened his body. And people mobbed Peter looking at him, and Peter said, it wasn't us, it wasn't us. It was in the name. Hallelujah. Everybody say, it's in the name. 
So he started preaching the gospel about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And about 5,000 souls were saved that day at his preaching. Verse 16. And he said, and in his name, in Jesus' name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness. Everybody say, perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Now, of course, they were arrested. Of course they were. The enemy doesn't like it, so they were arrested, put in prison, and the following day they were brought before the, the court and made to respond to just what was going on in Acts chapter 4, verse 5, and it said, and it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, scribes, as well as Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, as well as many who were of the family of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem, verse 7, and when they had set them, the apostles in their midst, they asked, by what power and by what name have you done this? And then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, that's a good time to get full of the Holy Ghost, and when you're sitting in the court of the enemy, that's a good time to get full of the Holy Ghost. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for the good deed done to this helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise in the house of God. Hallelujah. Now in the last week, last Sunday, we talked about keys to the kingdom. Keys to the kingdom. And we found that those keys uh, are what gives us access to kingdom wisdom and principles, kingdom understanding, kingdom miracle signs and wonders, kingdom revelation to all the blessings of the kingdom and the benefits of the kingdom. Jesus said to Peter, because Peter recognized that he was the Christ, the son of the living God, and Jesus said, blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven has revealed this to you. And unto you I give this day, I give you the keys of the kingdom. And what you bind is bound in heaven, and what you loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. Glory to God. So keys are things that, that lock things and unlock things. Keys are the things by way we get entrance into kingdom revelation, knowledge, blessings, miracles, signs, and wonders. Glory to God. But chief among all the keys, and we listed 10 last Sunday, and there's many, many more. But I think chief among all the keys is the name of Jesus Christ. Praying in the name of Jesus Christ. Operating in that name and exercising spiritual authority in the name of of Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what Peter did. Uh, Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. What did he have? A key. <laughs> what have I got? I got a key. I can unlock your healing. Will you walk through that door? I've got a key to the answer to your situation. Uh, look at me. When he said, look at him in the original language, that is the strongest connection. It's as if everybody else just disappeared. It was just Peter and the man at the gate, beautiful, locked eyes, and I fastened on one another. Something is going to happen. The man thought he was going to receive an alm. Peter knew he was going to receive his healing. Uh, Peter says... 
I'm not going to give you alms. I'm going to change your life. Alms will get you a meal. Legs will get you a whole new life. Leaping and jumping and praising God. No longer an outcast. Now he was in the temple with Peter and John. Keys to the kingdom. And the name of Jesus Christ is the greatest key that anybody will ever have. Because when you call on that name, do you remember the first time you called on that name? In faith. When you said, I can't live this way anymore, Jesus, save my soul. Do you remember when you called on him, when you were in the muck and the mire of the world, and you called Jesus, and the gates of hell had to let you go, and God reached down and got you and lifted you up, changed your life. Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. You don't need to be a great theologian to call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Peter said, silver and gold have I not, but what I have, I've got a key. I'm going to unlock your healing. Are you willing to walk through the door? And he reached down, and the man reached up, and they got faith connection. Glory to God. And immediately bones and ankles were made whole. Something that had not worked ever now worked. Church, can I tell you that when Jesus touches your situation, I don't care how long it hasn't worked. It'll start working if you just call on the name of Jesus. Come on. It'll work if you call on the name of Jesus and let Jesus reach out. And you reach up and get hold of his hand. Someone say, praise the Lord. Now, a name is an expression of authority. A name is an expression of authority. They knew that. Peter knew that. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And what they asked in Acts chapter 4, verse 7, when they set the apostles before them... They said, by what power or by what name have you done this? A name is an expression of authority. It's just a matter of what backs the name up. How much is backing that name up? What kind of power supports that name, backs that name up? Is there power associated with the name? A name is an expression of some measure of power and some measure of authority. With Jesus, it's all authority, praise God, and all power. And Peter, when they asked him, by what power, what name have you done this? Let it be known to you in verse 10 of Acts chapter 4. Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of, Naz <coughs> of Nazareth, whom you've crucified, whom God has raised from the dead, by him this man stands before you whole. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. A name is an expression of power. We say things, in the name of the law, stop. And people stop if they know what's right. One patrolman can stand in an intersection and stop a 3,000-pound vehicle by lifting up his hand. Stop. And you screech. Come to a stop. One man, because he says, in the name of the law stop and what do you do you stop you go you stop now in the name of the law that one man is not standing by himself he's one man he's in a uniform he's got a badge he's got the equipment to go with it but behind him is a whole structure of authority 
that is associated with his position. Because you know if you don't stop for him, his friends, come on, come on, his friends will find you and stop you. And if they can't stop you, their friends, the SWAT team, will find you and stop you. And if they can't stop you, their friends, uh, the FBI, the National Guard, uh, whoever, will find you and stop you. Why? It starts with one man holding up his hand in the name of everybody that's standing behind me. It's best for you to stop. Because I can escalate this beyond what you can escalate it. When you pray in the name of Jesus, you are invoking power and authority for all of the structure that goes along with that name. Hallelujah. Now, the Word makes it very, very clear. That Jesus' name is above all other names. Jesus has all authority. There is no other name above the name of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus in Matthew 28 and 18 said, he spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. He wanted you to know that for a reason. All authority was his. He left the throne, became incarnate man, paid the price, death, burial, and resurrection, returned to the throne, highly exalted. Now he is enthroned again, and he wants you to know, he made it very clear, all authority is his. Paul makes the point in Philippians 2, verse 8. He being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, the death of the cross. Therefore, everybody say, therefore. therefore. So he fulfilled his mission. And in that fulfilling, God is going to exalt him, return him back to his original standing beside him. Therefore, God has also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. Not a name that is above every name. The name. There is no other name. He has the name that is above every name. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 10, and at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven, those on earth, those under the earth, in all three realms, heaven, earth, and below, every knee shall bow. I understand there are knees that are not bowing to the name of Jesus right now. I understand in this day and age that there are people shaking their fists at the mention of his name. But the day is coming. I said the day is coming when every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. In heaven, in earth, below the earth. Verse 11 And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's just we're smart enough to get in on it early. (laughs) We're not waiting for the shout in the trump. We're not waiting for judgment day. We got it now. Say, I got it. Say, I got it. I got it. I'm already confessing with my tongue. I'm already bowing with my knee. I'm already devoting my life to the name of Jesus. His name is above all other names. And I'm seated with him in heavenly places. Glory to God. Hebrews 1 and 4. Having become much better than the angel, he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. See, God is making the point. He wants you to know that his name is above all other names, that all authority is in his name. Ephesians 1 and 20. 
which the Lord worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above. Everybody say, far above. Far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named, uh, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. So let's be clear. The name of Jesus Christ is above all other names. There's power in that name. There's authority. No, let me correct myself. There's all authority. All authority in that name. He lacks no ability. He lacks no authority. In his earthly ministry, he was always the one with the authority. If it was a, a need in the natural realm, he could speak to the stormy seas, be still, be at peace, be still, and there would be a great calm. He could always take authority over nature. He could take authority over sin. He could take authority over devils. He could take authority over death even. Lazarus come forth. He was always in authority. And that's why he could give his authority to his disciples. I give you authority. Go preach the kingdom and heal the sick and deliver devils. Deliver them of devils. And so he had all authority in his earthly ministry. In fact, in his earthly ministry, his name was a big deal. The Father gave him that name spoken through an angel. Let's look in Luke chapter 1, verse 32. When the angel spoke to Mary... The angel said, he will be great. He will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. That means he's the son of God and he's the Messiah, the divine king of Israel. And then in Matthew 1, when the angel spoke to Joseph... While Joseph thought about these things in Matthew 1 and 20, behold, an angel appeared to him and said, In a dream, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived of her is of the Holy Spirit. And the church said, Thank God. Verse 21, And she will bring forth a son, and you will call his name Jesus, which means Savior, for he will save his people from their sins. A, a name is very important. A name is very important. I saw a picture when in our family gathering over the weekend. I saw a picture of uh, my namesake, who I'm named after. I'd never seen his picture before. Because back in that day, I'm named after my uh, great-grandfather on my mother's side. And um, James Whiteford Cairns is his name. James Whiteford Watts is my name. And so I saw his picture for the first time. And it was a, a picture that was hand uh, colorized. They did, did it that way back in those days. And the mother said, this is who you're named after. You have the family name. And uh, I said, great, you know, it's, it's fun to see that person and, and to realize some of your roots and whatnot. But the names that we are, that we receive, uh, say something or should say, certainly do in Scripture, about our character. We should think before we name our children. Come on, somebody. Amen. And everybody here, I love the names you've selected for your children and your grandchildren. They're perfect. Don't change them. But <laughs> we should think sometimes when we're naming our children, uh, that we're giving them a name that they can grow up into. That it is, it is a statement of character that we want to see them blossom into, grow into. You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Verse 22 of Matthew 1. And all this was done that it might be fulfilled uh, that which was spoken by the Lord through the prophets, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Now that prophet was Isaiah, and you go back to Isaiah chapter 7, Isaiah chapter 9, and you read, A child is born, unto, a son, unto us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulders, his name will be called, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. A name is a big deal. 
and his name has power and his name has authority and that's why Paul tells us in Romans chapter 10 whoever calls on his name will be saved why because the devil can't stop it there's more power in his name to break the grip of the devil in your life to break the yoke of the devil off your neck to lift the burden of sin off your back there is more power in his name that the enemy than the enemy has to keep you in your situation there's power in the name of Jesus I said there's power in the name of Jesus there's healing power in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance power in the name of Jesus. There's salvation power in the name of Jesus. There's peace. There's joy. There's whatever you have need of is in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why he said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. There's life, an abundant life in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, the reason... Jesus wanted you to know that all authority has been given to him. The reason that Jesus wanted you to know that there's power in his name. There's reason that the authors of the Old and New Testament wanted you to know that he has been given a name that is above every other name. The mention of his name. All other authorities in, in heaven, earth, and below the earth have to bow before him. All other names have to bow before him. Glory to God. The reason he wants you to know that there's power and authority in his name is because he is giving you the legal right to use that name on your behalf as a child of God, as a citizen of the kingdom, as a joint heir with Jesus Christ, as a covenant holder with the Lord God Almighty. You have the right to use the name of Jesus Christ as a key to gain access to the benefits of the kingdom. Hallelujah. See, it would have been one thing if Jesus accomplished his mission, left, dead, buried, resurrection, left, went up to heaven, sat on the right hand of the Father, never heard from him again. No, 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 no. He spent 40 days talking with us sharing with us about the kingdom, about the power of his name, about the ability that is in his name. Let me give you an example. In my name, Mark 16, verse 17, and these signs shall follow me, follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents and drink any deadly thing. It will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We can pray in his name. We can be healed in his name. We can cast out devils in his name. We can be delivered in his name. There is no limit to what can be accomplished in his name because he has all power and all authority invested in that name. The name is an expression of his authority. And his name is what he has given us the right to use. Hallelujah. John 14 and 13. Whatever you ask in my name. This is the Lord's farewell discourse to the church. John 14 through 17. He's talking at the Last Supper about the keys of the kingdom. And this is what he says. These are his final words. Right before Gethsemane. Right before the arrest. Right before the cross, this is his final impartation to the church. And this is what he says. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. There needs to be a better shout of glory about it. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. Now, in his name means in his will. I know what his will is. I have the book. I know what his will is. I got the Holy Ghost to bear witness. Of that which is in his book. I know what the will of God is. So 
I can represent his will. I can manifest his will. I can further the cause of Christ in the earth today by using his name, by invoking the name that is above all other names uh, to see his will come to pass in the earth. It's called power of attorney. If you have power of attorney, you have the power on somebody else's behalf to accomplish, fulfill, and further their will using their resources. Everything they got, you would have access to in order to further their will, their desire in the earth. Now, I cannot, as power of attorney, I could not, should not, it would be wrong for me to have access to their bank account, access to their belongings, access to their, to their uh, whatevers, and just heap it upon myself, heap it upon my will. That would be wrong. No, I'm not given power of attorney to rob them. I'm given power of attorney to fulfill their will to cause their desires, their will, to come about in the earth. So I would use their resources to bless who they want to bless, to do what they want to see done. If they're not here to do it, and I'm here to do it, and I have power of, uh, of attorney to do it, and I have access to their resources to do it, I want to know what their will is. What do you want done with this? I'm a steward of your stuff. What do you want me to do with it? Okay, you wrote it in a book. I got the book. Praise the Lord. This is how you want me to use your name to disperse your goods, to do your will, to further your cause. And I can use your name. I can write the check. I can fill in the amount. Come on. Healing, prosperity, peace that passes, all understanding, joy of the Lord, life and life abundantly. I can fill in the check and cash it. Glory to God. God says, that's right. Whatever you say. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. I'm giving you a blank check. My name is on it. Cash it. But too many believers say, oh, thank you, Lord. And write that check out for one dollar. Because I, I don't want to, I want to stay humble, Lord. I, I don't want to be completely healed or completely prospered or completely happy or com have completely life and life abundantly. No, I, I don't want to. And God says, come on, man, whatever, whatever you ask. And we always, we always hedge things by saying, yeah, 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 but if it be thy will. If it be, we know what his will is. We got the book. Come on, church. We got the book. We know what the will is. So cash the check. His will is healing. <laughs> That's his name, Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee. His will is provision, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Cash the check, cash the check. Use his name, his name is on the check. Hallelujah. John 16 and 23. In that day you'll ask nothing of, of me, for most assuredly I say unto you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Whatever you ask in my name, he will give it to you. You know, the Bible even says where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. You think he's with us today? You, you think he's encouraging me right now about his name? I think he is. The previous verse, he says, If any two of you on earth agree as touching anything that you should ask, it shall be done for you of our Father who art in heaven. Glory to God. If any two are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. I'm going to make sure it happens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's why Peter said, I don't have silver or gold right now, but what I do have is a key. And in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the church got this. The church 
got this. Because when Peter went back and told the church, man, they, they are upset downtown. <laughs> they don't like the name of Jesus. They do not like the name of Jesus. They really didn't like it when I said, you guys are the ones who crucified him, but he's alive, and I'm healing people in the name of Jesus. Did not like that at all. You know what the church said? The church started praying, and the house started shaking, and the church said, God, give us boldness to preach this gospel to the world. Glory to God. And in John 4 and 30, they said, Lord, by stretching forth your hand to heal that there may be signs and wonders may be done in the mighty name of your servant, Jesus. They got it. There's power in the name. There's power in the name. Well, let me close by saying this. The name is a key. It is not a magic wand. You got, you got to know this. Because sometimes we pray and we say, bless me, bless me, bless me. In Jesus' name, I pray. And it's just a little tagline. But we're not talking about formulas now. We're talking about faith. We're talking about the faith that holds the key to the kingdom. Is faith. In Acts 3 and 16, Jesus, uh, Peter said, And his name through faith in his name has made this man strong. It, it's not about a tagline. It's not about a formulaic saying. It's not about rote Memories, it is about the faith in his name. That's why Peter, when he fastened his eyes upon the man, and the man fastened his eyes upon Peter, and there was this dynamic moment going on between the healer and the healed. This thing, that this powerful faith moment. And Peter reached out his hand. In the name of Jesus, he was invoking the authority and the power of that name because he knew he had a key to the kingdom that if he appropriated the name by faith, that man's life would be changed forever and forever and forever. It's by his name through faith in his name has made this man strong faith in his name back in the day there was some itinerant ministers that would use the name of Jesus they would say it this way they'd cast out a devil or try to I cast you out by the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. Doesn't sound very strong, does it? I like the way Peter did it. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. But they said, I cast you out in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. I don't know how successful they were with that. But we do have an account in Scripture where the seven sons of Sceva tried it. In Acts chapter 19, and also there were seven sons of Sceva, verse 14, a Jewish chief priest who did so, and the evil spirit, they were trying to, seven of them now, are trying to cast out an evil spirit in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. And so the evil spirit says to them in verse 15, Jesus I know. <laughs> the, the devil's got an address book too, you know. He's got an iPhone just like everybody else has got an iPhone. He knows who folks are. Jesus I know. Paul I know. But who are you? Your name isn't rattling around in the halls of hell. Devils aren't afraid of you. Nobody's running when they see you coming. You got no keys to the kingdom in your pocket. 
And to prove it, the devil says, I'm going to whoop every one of you. I am going to whoop you. I'm going to rob you. I'm going to strip you naked. You're going to go running down the road with no keys and no clothes. It's a bad day in the ministry. That's a bad day in the ministry. You don't have any keys. If you don't have faith in the name, invoking the name will not work. If you have no faith in the name. So what do you ask for in the name of Jesus? Limitless faith declarations. That's what we should ask for. Did he say that he has all authority? Does he say that he has all power? Does he say that every knee must bow and every tongue confess? Does he say that he has given us in the name, given us the ability to heal diseases, cast out devils, take up any serpent, drink any deadly thing? Did he not say that there is a, a shared power of attorney between him and us and the usage of his name? Then what would limit us from asking for our complete and total healing, from asking for our blessing, from asking for life and life abundantly, from asking for provision for our life, for our children's life, for our children's children's life, for our church family's life, for our nation's life. What would prevent us from asking the entirety of what we could imagine by faith for the blessing of the Lord to be bestowed upon our life. God says, my name's on the check. You fill it out. As to the measure of your faith, you fill it out. And too very often, I just want to get through the day, Lord. Don't let me fall. Don't let me fail. Instead of writing down, Life and life abundantly. Victorious in every area of life. I want to chase the devil. I want to walk on water. I want to raise the dead. I want to see the heavens open and a blessing poured out upon my life and my children's life and my children's children's life. I want to see the manifestations of the kingdom. I want to have kingdom revelation. I want to have kingdom knowledge. I want to have kingdom understanding. I want to have kingdom miracles and signs and wonders manifest in my life. Why would we limit? Why would we limit him when he is limitless? <laughs> Why are we trying to put God in a box when the heavens are his footstool? Hallelujah. Whatever you ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Your healing glorifies the Father. How? Because it was the Son's name that brought it about. Someone give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Did you get anything out of this today? Hallelujah.